The four roles in Valorant all come with their own unique playstyles and have their own job to help their team win the game. For someone like me who will flex pick often, I've become accustomed to filling in whatever role my team needs, but those of you who maybe haven't spent that much time on a specific role might not feel as comfortable when you have to flex to an off role. So for this video, I'm going to make it incredibly simple for you by providing everyone with three simple rules to follow for every role that will help you not just carry your weight, but carry your games. Before we get into it though, I just wanted to give a shout out to a couple of skillcap.com subscribers who've reported some really crazy rating improvements in Valorant. These players are doing an awesome job climbing and it's super amazing to hear our users actually feel like we've helped them improve. So many of you do really have what it takes to hit the higher ranks, sometimes all it takes is a little bit of guidance. I don't want to keep you all from the video though, but if you wanted to test out the service for yourself to see similar gains, be sure to check out skillcap.com, link in the description below. To kick off this video though, I'm going to start off by talking about the most popular role in the game, Duel. List. Now, the first game-changing rule to keep in mind when playing a duelist is to be more aggressive with your utility. As a duelist, your main job is to make space for your team, and that means get them onto a site on offense and helping to take control of certain areas on defense. Duelists have very explosive kits, and when you play one, you should try to take advantage of that by making plays. This means dashing onto site if you're playing Jet, double satcheling in as Rays, or even sprinting in as Neon. You need to know that as a duelist, your kit is not as important for closing out rounds as some of the other roles are on post plant. So going in and dying is okay if your team is able to trade you and get control of a site. You need to think of yourself as being more of a martyr for your team whenever you're playing as a duelist. If you play scared and bait your team, you might get more kills, but you're also going to be costing your team a lot of rounds and ultimately losing you games where you feel like you may have popped off. But this rule is one that you've probably heard before, so let's move on and get into the second rule, which is you need to ask your teammates to help you with their utility. Duelists are actually kind of supposed to be the experts in the game. You should know what all of your teammates can do to assist you. You're supposed to make space, but you're not supposed to do that alone. A site execute takes an entire team doing their job. Smokes need to be down, and the Sova Dart needs to land at the right time, the flashes need to be on point. So before taking a site, make sure that your team is all on the same page and you're getting the utility that you need. You should be double satcheling onto site, but if you don't ask your Sova to drone first and clear the corners for you, chances are you're just gonna get shot down out of the air. This rule also applies on defense. When you're looking to make a play, ask your omen to blind for you maybe. I do this a ton on Ascent when I plan to push out a main for example. I'll have my omen blind for me and then I'll dash in to take advantage of the fact that the enemies can't see and I'll get a free pick or sometimes two. Valorant is a team game after all and even duelists aren't supposed to be able to do everything by themselves. The last rule I'm going to give you guys though when playing a duelist is to not be afraid to back off from a play. Sometimes you try to make a play and the enemy team counters you. Maybe you throw a jet smoke and get into an aggressive angle and then the enemy team Yoru flashes you and breach stuns. That's your cue to get out of there. You might not feel like you made a play since you didn't get a kill, but you did manage to trade some utility and now they're in a different position and you know their position, so it, it can work out for you in the long run. That is, as long as you stay alive. This will leave the enemy team with either less util on the post plant or less util on the execute, and both of those things are really good for you. You should be playing more aggressively on a duelist when compared to the other roles, but that doesn't mean you need to throw your life away. So if the enemy team is showing a little too much resistance, don't be afraid to back off. Now with duelists out of the way, that brings us to our next role, controllers. Controllers have arguably the most important job on the team, and when played correctly can have a huge impact on the outcome of a game. So my goal is to give you guys some rules for when you're playing controller to always have an impact in your games. The first rule is to make sure that your smokes are deep enough. Let me explain. Smoking deeper into choke points gives the enemy team less free space. This will ensure that they don't creep up on you or your teammates and explode out of it by catching you off guard. A great example of this is Seelong on Haven where if you smoke near the choke point, you give the enemy team all of Seelong for free. They can use this smoke to creep up on you and you won't be able to see them coming. By smoking deeper, you can give the enemy team way less space. Doing this ensures that the enemy team can't creep up on you. You know that nobody can be playing a cubby now and overall it's just a much better smoke. You also want to make sure that your smokes are in line with the doorways, almost like a wall. If you smoke outside of the doorway, this gives enemies the opportunity to swing through from any direction, which makes it so much harder to hold the smoke. The second rule that we have to keep in mind when playing controllers is to reposition often whenever you have cover from your smokes. It's pretty hard to completely reposition on most agents, especially when an enemy can just hold you. Controllers, on the other hand, have the ability to block enemy sightlines pretty much whenever they want. 
This means that if you're ever playing in a position and an enemy sees you, you can quickly put down a smoke and then use it to move somewhere else. This helps you stay unpredictable and will end up netting you free kills on enemies who have no clue where you are. The final game changing rule I want you to keep in mind when playing controller is when spraying through smokes, only fire off a few bursts of bullets at a time and reposition between your shots. Spraying through smokes can be really good, especially if people are making noise on the other side or within the smoke. In those situations, definitely try to shoot those players. You're going to pick up some free kills. Even if you don't necessarily hear somebody, but you have a hunch that somebody might be on the other side of the smoke, feel free to shoot a few bursts of bullets into the smoke. Even if you're using a vandal, just make sure that you reposition between these shots. You want to be careful that when people swing through the smoke or spray back, you're not standing exactly where they expect you to be. Spraying through smokes can be a double-edged sword. Sometimes it's really good, sometimes it's not a great idea. A solid rule of thumb that I would give you to determine if it's a good idea or a bad idea is if you are the only person holding the smoke, it's probably not the best idea for you to just start spamming through it. If you have a teammate holding it so if you get swung, they can trade out that kill while the enemy is not looking at them. This obviously doesn't apply in all situations. If the enemy team is shooting through the smoke and you think that you have a good shot on them, then definitely take it. But just keep in mind that it's not always the best idea. The next rule I'm going to be talking about is initiators, and the first rule I'm going to give you guys is to not be afraid to use your utility to get some early information. I know a rule that a lot of teams will follow is they'll use their first recon or knife to gain early information, and then they'll use their second one for the execute once it refreshes. It doesn't even need to be those abilities though. On attack, using a drone to find three enemies on site or someone playing close with a shotgun could save your team the entire round. I know hitting sites fast before the enemy team can react sounds like a great idea, but doing that will cost you rounds. Sometimes it's better to slow down a bit and let your utility do some of the work, so that way when you push in, you actually know what you're pushing into. On defense, this is just as, if not more important, since getting early info with your utility can let your team know whether or not they should rotate early. If you sit back on site with an initiator, the enemy team is just going to be able to take a bunch of free space and explode onto site very quickly, giving your team no time to rotate. Alternatively, if you see KO's knife or Sky's dog early and see three to four enemies, your team now has that information that they need to rotate early or even push up to take space on the other side of the map. And if you don't see anyone, now you know that you're free to potentially rotate early since the enemies are most likely on the other side of the map. This also leads right into our second game changing rule when playing initiators, and that's to use information you get for yourself to make a play. If you see four players on site when you drone, great, now use that information. Tell your team to back off. If you dart see long on Haven and you see that nobody is there, don't just sit back on site, use the fact that you know see long is clear and take control of Cubby. As an initiator, your job is to scout out what the enemy team is doing, and once you have a clearer picture of that, you should be jumping on those opportunities to make a play. The third rule you should keep in mind when playing initiators is to communicate a game plan with your team. Initiators have some of the most powerful site execution tools in the game, as well as some of the best ultimates. If you're playing KO and your ultimate is online, make sure your team knows so you can coordinate a push with it. If you have Breach Ultimate, tell your Jet or Raze that you plan to use it on a site and have them dash or double satchel in to follow it. As an initiator, you should try to be a leader in your games and use your utility to make plays happen. Now with the initiators out of the way, it's time for us to talk about our last rule, which is the Sentinels. The first rule I want you to follow when playing a Sentinel is to play in positions where you can capitalize on your utility. All of the Sentinels have some sort of utility that they can play off of. Place down Killjoy's turret somewhere, and then when the enemy tries to shoot it, you can peek and kill them while they're distracted. When your chamber trip goes off, be in a position somewhere where you can shoot the players that get slowed. Even as Sage, you can play on top of your wall, and when they try to shoot it, you can swing them and get some free kills. As a Sentinel, your utility is great for getting information, but you're most lethal when you're playing somewhere where you can take advantage of that information. The second game-changing rule that you should be following when playing Sentinel is to always be trying to switch things up. This means to switch up your setups, what site you're playing on, and even where you're playing on those sites. As a Sentinel, you need to be more unpredictable. If the enemy team knows exactly where you play and how you set up, your util will become a lot easier to counter. Even if you don't have a standard setup, as long as you keep switching things up, you're going to be very difficult to deal with. Last but not least, the third game-changing rule I want to give you guys when you're playing Sentinel is to make sure you're putting down your utility before the round starts. I know, I know, this seems intuitive when you first hear it, but especially on attack, this isn't always a given. I can't tell you how many chambers I've seen not place their tripwire on attack. 
Sentinels have some of the best tools in the game for watching flanks, and a lot of the time having your trips down to cover flanks will save you a round or two that you normally would have lost from enemies shooting you in the back. Following this one rule will make games feel a lot more stable and limit the amount of rounds that you lose for free from a single flank. That concludes this video on three game changing rules for every role though. If you found it helpful, make sure to leave a like for this video. It really does help us out. Also, feel free to share any rules that you follow when you're playing that you find to be helpful in the comments. As always, my name's King and we here at Skillcapped want to thank you all for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.